it's amazing in life how sometimes you hear something or something happens and all of a sudden there's a little turn of a dial and you come to understand things differently, just like that. And when you do, it brings so much more richness than you had before. And that's what we're going to talk about. It's inside each one of you, your individual power to heal. Sounds cool, right? It is so cool. You're going to love this. So how many of you have ever been to Starbucks and you pull up and it turns out someone's purchased your coffee? Many of you, right? How does that feel? So cool, right? And then how many of you decide, oh, I'm going to buy for behind me, sometimes many cars behind and you just keep up this chain of awesomeness, right? Well, it turns out that when, when we extend beyond ourselves, it feels really warm and fuzzy, right? And it's pretty easy to be nice to the nice, but when it comes to jerks, it's like, dude, did you really just do that? Right? And I don't know about you, but we see it all the time in the news and on social media. We've become a culture of outrage. We so easily get very, very angry or furious or disappointed in people. And we're not buying coffee for them. Oftentimes, we're yelling at them in the car or we're yelling at them online. Well, the funny thing is, when you activate your superpower to heal, you heal yourself. And that's where we're going to go. All right. We're going to go on a little journey here. And this is a little bit tough. But stay with me because there's a lot of really cool stuff on the other side. So you see that cute guy right there? Robbie McKay. I had the incredible honor of being married to him for about 10 years. And we had this really cool life together, and we had our first son, Connor McKay, and we had restaurants, the Wild Alaskan, many restaurants. We were really busy. And then we were having our second child, a little baby girl, and it turns out, the day she was to be born, the bag was all packed to go to the hospital. But she actually died inside my stomach. So we went to deliver her, but she wasn't alive. You can imagine how it felt to us. And I've come to understand how it felt to the doctor and the nurses who helped us through. They still had to do all the things they do clinically to deliver a, a, my baby safely for me. And they did it in a way they didn't say a word. But there was a softness you could feel. Their eyes were soft. Their hearts were gentle. And feeling that caring, like it's a tangible force. And it started a healing. So then, almost right away, I was like, I need another baby. <laughs> Come on, let's get busy. And the very night we tried, we got pregnant with Amelia Grace McKay. Whoa. <laughs> the world has never been the same since. <laughs> And, you know, she's really beautiful now, but as a baby, she was not very cute. And Rob thought, she's the most beautiful baby in the world. <laughs> Swear she wasn't. He entered her into a baby, beautiful baby contest. <laughs> we didn't get a call. <laughs> so what was really cool is that we were so busy because we had these restaurants. And, but we had learned after our first baby died that we wanted to be very intentional with our life. We wanted to claim our moments because, obviously, we didn't know how many we would have. We just experienced a shocking passing of our baby. So we sold our catering business, and we streamlined, and we claimed time for family, which I'm so grateful for because <clears throat> one night in September 2003, Robbie, who played competitive hockey in a men's league, read 
the books to the kids. Every other night, we take turns. He read the books to the kids. I'm in the kitchen. He's about to leave. And we say, I love you. And he goes to play hockey. And after he scored a goal, he collapsed on the ice. He died of a heart attack. And he was a world-class athlete. He didn't drink. He didn't smoke. He was a happy, happy, loving man. <sighs> you can't imagine. You can't imagine. So I felt so strongly for these two kids. They were seven years old. Connor was seven, and Gracie was 18 months old. They lost their daddy. And that would forever change their life. And I had a fierce commitment within me that I would not let them lose their childhood too. It would not just be on the altar of their daddy passing and they weren't going to lose their mom. So that meant right away I had to go to soccer practices. I had to be out in the world. I had to go to Trader Joe's. I had to drive my car, which was my sanctuary because I would blast the music and sob my guts out. But you know, the funny thing about when you do that is you're not instantly responsive when the green arrow says turn. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been behind a car that doesn't turn immediately on the green arrow? <laughs> Don't you love them? <laughs> well, they didn't always love me, but I was so fragile. I was so fragile, and the people in my tribe, my people who knew what had happened, oh my gosh, they knew that, and they treated us so kindly. But out in the world, they didn't know. I was just some lousy driver. And I felt like, oh my gosh, if only I could have a fragile label that I could wear on the front and back. And the parents at the games would be nicer, and the drivers around me would be nicer. And then, like it dawned on me, every single one of us needs a fragile label. Maybe you just got diagnosed with cancer. Maybe your kid has a fever at home. Maybe you were abused as a child, and you're just trying to hold it together. I mean, when I look at the birth process, and you see how we come in, it's pretty rough. It's like that should be the thing that tells us we come in in a really hard way. There is suffering, but there's so much beauty. But life is messy for every single one of us. So, like I started to put all this together. And I was so fortunate because my mom, Mary, who's pictured here in her honeymoon one month after World War II ended, she had seven kids. I was her youngest. And my mom, she just had this natural knowing about all of this. Like, she just knew that people hurt inside. And it all came home to me. I think I was about 11 or 12, and we were in a grocery store. And because there's seven kids, four boys, mind you, so that's like 12 gallons of milk in those carts. <laughs> we're going through the line, and the checker was the rudest checker I've ever seen in my life. She's throwing the cans down. She's squishing our bread. She's grumpy. And I'm like, I'm kind of starting to get outraged. And I, like, I couldn't believe it. And we're together now, what, 20 minutes to do all that food? And at the end, when it comes time to pay, my mom paid with this stuff called cash. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> we're going back a few years. And the checker, like, she almost threw her change at her. Whoa. Like, my mom had every right to really be angry and do something about it. I didn't say anything till we got out to the parking lot. And I'm like, Mom, are you kidding me? That was the rudest thing I've ever seen in my life. Why, before we left, instead of telling the manager, why did you look her in the eye 
put your hand on her hand and say, I hope the rest of your day goes better. Why did you do that? She said, honey, imagine what must be going on inside of her. I don't want to add to that. I want to make it better. Whoa. All right. So the reality is she was a saint. She really was. But that's not what we're talking about. It is not required that any of us be saints. Thank goodness, because I would not be able to do this. <laughs> because the fact is, it is not about that horrible, lousy driver. It is not about the careless waiter. It is not about that super rude clerk. It's about you and what happens inside of you when we interface with the world. Because guess what? We are all walking wounded. So we have a lot of opportunities to experience this. So the funny thing is, is that as humans in our DNA, we are hardwired for connection. It's what we crave. It's what we want more than anything. When everybody says, I, I don't have meaning, I don't have purpose. Well, our meaning and our purpose is meant to come in our simple little day-to-day -day through connection. But instead, we spend our time with the same old stinking thinking, blah, blah, blah. And guess what happens? We feel really lousy about it. And we just continue the disconnection. We are robbing ourselves by a myth that somehow we're not connected. Oh, sure, we're connected to our neighbors, the other people on our side of the team, our loved ones, the people we resonate with, everybody else, they're other, right? That's a myth. What if everyone around you that you encountered what if you started to realize they are part of your tribe and that we're all in this together? Because we are. And more importantly, when you stop being outraged by what's happening outside and you switch on this power to heal, and we're going to talk in a minute about what that is and how you activate it, all these crazy things happen just like that, instantly. Now, you're already doing it so often in your life, but it's really hard to do it to jerks, right? They don't deserve our kindness. But you deserve your kindness. Don't do it for the jerks. Do it for you. Because what happens is when you activate your power to heal... Life's energy flows through you, and you become connected. Even if that person isn't sweet back in return, you're, you're sending this nice, loving, healing energy, and it's inside of you. And your day-to-day -day starts to find this simple meaning, even when it's raining, even when somebody's a jerk to you, you're like, ha ha, I'm healing your childhood. <laughs> That's big stuff. That is really big stuff. So, I don't do it when I'm driving, but in circumstances when I'm not driving, I'll just close my eyes and I'll even say something like Mary used to say. Hope the rest of your day goes better. You know, I picture people, like, if somebody's in so much pain that they're acting out like that, you know, if I saw a little child being abused in a parking lot, I would race to their rescue. Who says this 45-year-old isn't still that little child that was abused in the parking lot? That's the fragile label. That's who we are. When you shower this feeling of just, oh, I hope it gets better, or you just send love, or, oh, I hope you start to trust yourself, or whatever, that is inside of you now. 
So if everybody for just a moment can close your eyes and think about your puppy, your baby, your grandbaby, something you love, your flowers, that feeling, that's what you shower your people with. And they're your people. If they've come into your world, there's a reason they're there. Shower the people with that feeling. Now, what you're feeling right now inside you, every time you do, you're healing you. Pretty cool, right? Like that. One little turn of the dial. And that's what happens inside you. It's a superpower you have. It's a superpower to make your life so much better. You just soften, you intend, you know you do not have to be a saint. If you can love your puppy, you can do this. You send that energy out there, and it is a tangible healing force. And you know what? Sometimes you won't be able to do it. Okay, fine. Every time you do, you're giving healing to yourself. So be the connection you crave. And really start doing it as soon as you can, as often as you can. Because honestly, none of us know how many moments we have. Why would we want to spend whatever moments we have with that stinking thinking when instead we could be giving ourselves this flow of love? and healing. Robbie didn't know that that hockey game was his last journey. He would have never thought that in a million billion years. And I hope we all live to 182 in perfect health, but it's not guaranteed. So clean your moments. It, oh, you'll come to life. You'll find so much more meaning. And it's funny when you discover how connected you are to your world, this world that you've been holding at arm's length. Because really, who wants to see other people's pain? We really want you to take care of mine, right? Well, they can't take care of yours, but you can. So cape up. <laughs> Heal yourself and heal your world. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.